Bienvenidos chicos y chicas a una presentación especial en el canal Ya que en esta ocasión tenemos a la voz de nuestro Hackerman preferido Nine S O más bien a su actor de voz Kyle McCarley Y desde acá estaremos hablando en inglés Así que no se olviden de activar los subtítulos en el video Kyle, thank you for spending some time to be, to be with us today Um, Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Um, could you present yourself to the audience, please? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kyle McCarley. I'm, I'm the voice of 9S in Near Automata. I could try to say that in Spanish, but it's probably faster if you just subtitle it for me. Okay, all right. No problem. Um, how's the quarantine treating you right now? Uh, it's... it's... It's it's okay. Um, we're we've my, I've been very lucky in that I I live I work in an industry that is that has been able to adapt fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Things have definitely slowed down, but we are still able to work in spite of the fact that we're kind of for the most part confined to our homes. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a little distraught over uh over the response to um to these quarantine restrictions that's being imposed but uh but hopefully someday things will be back to normal yeah that's what we hope so too um well this is the first time that uh some media had made an interview with you in spanish i think so i think it might be I i'm not 100 certain but i think so yeah i've been interviewed Because I, I went to a convention in uh, Montreal, so oh. I've been interviewed in, in by a bilingual person before, but it was it was French, it was not Spanish, oh, um, and most of their audience also spoke English. So I don't, I don't, I think this is a first for me. Yeah, it's the first time. Yeah, well, we had the exclusive guys. We are the first media, the first channel that talks with Kyle McCarley in Spanish. So thank you, Kyle, for giving us the opportunity. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks. Kyle, um, have you ever traveled to any Latin American country before? I don't... Well, yes. Uh, yes, gosh, I, how could I forget this? I, I, I honeymooned, <laughs> uh, honeymooned in oh. Belize. But oh. they speak English, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little I, little easier travel for me. Yeah, it was more easier. Um, if you had the chance to travel to another country in Latin America, which one would you like to visit? Oh, I don't. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> probably, probably somewhere in Mexico. Maybe I don't know. I wow. don't know. I don't. I honestly, I don't know enough about. Uh, About the, the, the different countries that are down there. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I had to tell you that you have a big fandom uh, in Latin America, especially in Mexico. Almost all my viewers are from Mexico, and they love uh, the work you make with 9S and Automata, and also in other games like Fire Emblem, for example. So if you visit Thank Mexico, you. if you visit Mexico, I can assure you, you have a lot of fans here. Uh, there. <laughs> okay. There. Sorry, I'm not from Mexico. <laughs> you're, you're not from, okay. <laughs> no, no, but almost all my viewers are from Mexico. So, but, well, okay. Well, I have to admit, I love your streams. I watched all your playthroughs from Automata and it was fantastic. My favorite uh, episode was the one you invited Joe Kutaro himself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, he he was a great guest. <laughs> yeah, well, and I see you're playing Trakengar 3 right now. Uh, what's your opinion of the game so far? I'm I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's uh, it's not my favorite in the series uh, so far. Um, because I've played through Automata and I've played through the original Nier. Um, and honestly, it's a toss up for me between those two, which one I, which one I think is my favorite, but, uh, but Drakengard 3, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it, but I feel like I'm not getting enough of the story to fully appreciate what's happening. And I know I will once I get to the end, but it's just, there's a whole lot more gameplay before you get to the, 
to the to the juicy stuff yeah in in dragon guard 3 and gameplays i have to admit that it sucks it's horrible <laughs> at least for my experience uh it's it's uh, it's a little it's a little repetitive it's a little button mashy there's not it doesn't have the free form exploration element that uh that near has yeah um since every since every level is is a linear stage yeah. um but the biggest issue that it has is is the fact that it was not optimized for the system that it was developed on so it, the frame rate is terrible yeah it sucks <laughs> <laughs> well and would you continue with drakengar 1 and 2 or maybe the mobile game from jogotaro sin alice in the future i i am considering all of the above at some point uh Drakengard 2 is probably the bottom of the list just based on yeah. the fact that Yoko Taro had nothing to do with it and and most yeah. of my fan base has told me we pretend that game doesn't exist so <laughs> I may skip that one I don't know we'll see okay right well we will follow you there we'll see what happens Carl this is the most frequent questions in this kind of interviews but it's impossible to contain myself to ask how did you start your career as voice actor um, I, growing up, all I ever wanted to do was be an actor, uh, and I moved from a small town in Kansas to Los Angeles, and I, uh, I started, I, I studied theater at, at the University of Southern California, and, uh, somewhere along the way, I, I kind of lost my passion for being on stage and being in front of a camera. And, uh, and I found a passion for being in front of the microphone through playing World of Warcraft and, uh, <laughs> and doing a, a fan radio play with, with some friends of mine. So I, uh, I, I decided after I had graduated from college and I spent a year not really knowing what I was doing with myself anymore because I wasn't really actively pursuing being an actor. Um, I decided I was going to take a class in, in voice acting specifically and, uh, and I immediately fell in love and I've been, I, I focused my career exclusively on voice acting ever since. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's been a long, hard journey, but I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. All right. Um, I had these questions now that you say that you also make performance in theaters or well, you study theater, right? Um, yes. It's pretty often that I see that some Hollywood movie actors or from TV series uh, do the voice of characters from animated movies. But with your expertise in voice, in voice acting, do they perform like a professional or would you say they lack experience? I would say uh, when, when celebrities come in to, do, uh, to, to play a, a part in an animated feature, it's usually because the whoever is making that casting decision wants the clout of that big name celebrity yeah. to help sell tickets but yeah. they almost universally they cast celebrities who are capable actors and voice acting is first and foremost acting uh i like to say lowercase voice uppercase acting because that's that's the uh that's the important that's the operative word <laughs> uh, so most of the time, those the, the celebrity stunt casting doesn't bother me because they're casting people who are capable of doing the job. Mm. Um, obviously, there are exceptions to that rule, but uh, but for the most part, I, I don't have a problem with it. All right. And if you were the voice actor, what other careers would you have chosen? Oh, I, I might have done something in radio because I, I kind of tangentially when I was getting into uh, to voice acting through the, the radio play stuff mm -hmm. I was doing podcasts about World of Warcraft and uh, I kind of got interested in that so I might have in another life gone <laughs> gone into radio uh, DJing or something but I, I, it feels that that would probably have been a mistake because it feels like a dying industry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right now it's not so popular in, in youngsters, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um, was there a series or anime or a video game in your childhood that inspires you and makes you say, uh, hey, I want to interpret these guys and that's why I want to be in the future, a voice actor or, or some experience like that? Oh gosh, uh, I can't point to any one thing in specific, but the the, the list is 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 lengthy. 
um, I I watched I watched a lot of cartoons growing up. Uh, I, I watched uh, Animaniacs was a big one, Freakazoid, and and Pinky and the Brain. That that trilogy of of cartoon series. Um, <laughs> right. I uh, I watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and oh. um and uh, when it was an after school block here in America, um, Toonami. I watched uh, uh, Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing and uh, a little bit of Sailor Moon and, and a bunch of other anime series that I don't even remember now. <laughs> um, uh, a bunch of Cartoon Network shows. I was a big fan of Scooby-Doo when I was growing up. Honestly, when I was too old to be as big of a fan of Scooby-Doo as I was, I was a big fan of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> um, right. uh so that's just yeah, just a few off the top of my head. I have to admit, I didn't know that in North America they watch almost the same shows that we see in Latin America. I, I always thought that you have a very different taste in animation from Latin America, but for what you say, uh, we see almost the same things here. So um, yeah, yeah, for the most part, what what gets popular in one place kind of travels around the world. Yeah, that's the same, I have to think. Well, now, about Automata, how did you get the role of Linus? Much like any other role, I, I auditioned for the part. Uh, what's a little bit unusual about that particular audition process was that it was done in person. Um, most of the time these days, voiceover jobs audition from home studios, like the one that I'm currently sitting in, and mm. uh, and then... Um, well, under under normal circumstances, then after the casting decision is made, or maybe they'll do a callback process where we come into the studio uh, and and actually work with with other humans present. <laughs> um, but uh, but for for Automata, the audition, the first round audition was done in the studio. Uh, just me and the engineer, though, and then uh, the the recording engineer. Oh. And then after the casting decision was made, then then. Then I got to come in to do sessions with the director and uh, and the client present. Right. And how are you doing right now? Because uh, you say you are recording from your home studio. Um, yeah. What about the directors, um, the engineers? How do you uh, compensate the lack of these uh, people? Yeah, it's it's a little different now. Um, a lot. It's basically, I mean, all all sessions now, recording sessions that are going on now, um, and a lot of them have been postponed. But the ones that are still going, we are we are remote recording from home. We're connecting through various means of of high fidelity audio transfer. Uh, there's software called Source Connect. Um, Session Link Pro is another popular one. Uh, and it just it just depends on what studio we're working with, what what project we're working on. I've even done some sessions where I record everything on my end and the director is just listening in on Skype and oh. uh, and giving feedback based on that. Um, and then I deliver uh, basically raw, unedited wave files <laughs> after the session is done. Yeah. Um, so it's been a quick a quick and 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 drastic uh adaptation process uh engineers i think are probably the ones that are getting hit the most within my industry because yeah. um because of the fact that they can't do a lot of the stuff that they normally can during a recording session they can't adjust our gain uh or our, our, our volume i guess is a is another word for that yeah. um they can't adjust uh any of those settings they can't they can't tweak how the microphone is placed for us that's all left for for actors to handle themselves um and there have been a couple of sessions where because of that there just hasn't been an engineer on the line um there is still somebody who has to go through and clean up the mess afterwards and and do all of the the editing and the mixing yeah. uh but the recording engineers i think are probably getting hit the most by the change yeah, the engineers are suffering so most, and I think uh, there's a lot of projects, uh, anime and video games, that have delays because of the of this problem, voice acting, maybe or not. They are in the schedule always. Definitely, 
I I think I mean it's gonna it's gonna be a while I think before consumers see the delays that are caused uh, in in the video game industry. Yeah. Uh, but yes, video games have definitely slowed down. I have worked on a couple, uh, but there have been a lot more that have been that have been put on hold for the moment. Oh. Um, anime was actually surprisingly the fastest niche of the voiceover world to to figure things out uh because technologically it's probably the most difficult but um i I don't know if it's just because of of deadlines or or just because profit margins are lower in that industry or or what uh what the reason is but for whatever reason anime has been the bulk of my work since uh since the shutdown yeah, actually, I watched uh, that you were selected uh, from the Tower of God anime. I, I'm watching this series right now in this season, and it just has like six episodes in Japanese, and you already had the the dub already, right? Uh, yes, uh, we've we have finished production on the dub, and it is already being released. Um, well, I say finished production; we finished recording. I don't know how much how much has to happen after we've done. Right. That that step, especially now, uh, but I know for me on Tower of God, I think all everything after I think episode four, I recorded from home. All right, uh, something interesting about Tower of God, um, you were reunited uh, with your partner from Automata, Kira Buckland, because she's Yuri Sahar, the partner of Evan Edward, your character, right? Yes, that that was a that was a. A fun little coincidence, I think. I don't. I don't think that was intentional. That was for trivia records or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> how is it to work again with her in this project? Well, it's uh, the, the anime production pipeline is so strange because we don't really work with other actors. We record. Oh. Uh, we record. It's a very isol isolated experience. Even before this time of of isolation. Uh, it's, it's only one actor at a time. Um, so I might hear some of her lines if she's recorded before me, I might hear some of her lines that, that happen to take place around the stuff that we're recording with, with me. Uh, mm -hmm. but for the most part, it's, it's a very solitary, solitary experience. Um, but, uh, but I, I love Kira. I got to know her because of Nier, because we became such fans of the game just from being a part of it. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're not as close as we were at the, at, at the, at the peak of Nier's popularity, but we are still, I, I still consider her a, a good friend and, uh, and we talk to each other fairly regularly. Yeah. She's a very lovely person. She was here like the last month. Uh, she gave us an interview in the channel. And well, oh, that's great. Yeah, she's a very lovely person. Well, returning yeah. to Automata, would you say that your interpretation of 9S is different from what Natsuki Hanae make in Japanese? Probably, um, because I did not hear a whole lot of his work uh, during recording. One of the things that's different about video games from from anime or well from localized video games like Nier that where it's recorded in another language first yeah. is uh in anime we always reference the original audio first mm -hmm. and in in video games we basically only reference the original stuff for uh, for for specific instances if it's a if it's a cinematic and we need to match timing Obviously, we're going to reference what what's already been done, um, and for some of the fight sounds and stuff, we often reference the the Japanese audio for that. I think we did for Near as well, um, but for the vast majority of it, I'm just given a time frame and say and and told, or actually, I think for for Automata, we didn't even have uh, time restraints. It was just do do as as you see fit with the performance and then uh and then and then go from there there were some there there were probably some lines and yeah. there certainly are other projects where we're we're given a time frame and it's and basically it's say this in under five seconds or seven seconds or however long the line is in japanese we just have to make sure we don't go longer than they mm -hmm. do 
Um, and and occasionally there will be some lines where it, it needs to match within half a second either way. Oh. Um, but but oftentimes we don't even reference uh, the original recording. And I think part of the reason for that is that the, the, the production pipeline is almost simultaneous on a video game yeah. compared to anime where everything is done like so the animation and, and and the voiceover is all done in Japan by the time it gets to us, and uh, and with video games we're kind of we're we're maybe a week or two behind them in terms of the the schedule. So sometimes we're recording stuff that hasn't been recorded in Japan yet. Oh. Um, so yeah, I I would I would imagine that my performance is a little bit different than his because I didn't hear a whole lot of it. Right. Um, well, would you say you had some freedom in how uh, 9S expressed himself or some words that you don't like, maybe you could change it in the process or or not? I, I felt very liberated from uh, from being able to do that that particular project because um, the character is it goes through so much yeah. um, without spoiling <laughs> anything, but uh, there's there's a there's there's such an arc for 9s that that just doesn't happen in in storytelling in general very often but especially for for uh for a voice actor i don't get to tell that kind of story very often i don't get to go on that kind of a roller coaster um ever really so it was uh very liberating in that sense in, in terms of taking freedom with with the script and and things like that i <laughs> The script was good. I didn't. I didn't need to make any changes to it, really. <laughs> All right. Well, and don't worry. Uh, you can talk with freedom in spoilers here, because uh, well, everyone here I think uh, have already uh, know about the history or maybe uh, finished the game. So talk with easy in the spoilers, because oh, actually I have some questions that will enter in terrain of spoilers. So <laughs> don't worry. About okay. That. So, um, <laughs> like you said, 9S has a lot of personality changes. Was it difficult to adapt to each change he has? Um, sorry, you cut out for part of that. I, I think I heard you ask, was it difficult to adapt to the changes in 9S's personality? Yeah, yeah, right. That's... Okay, just wanted to make sure I got the question right. Um, uh, no. Um, it was, it wasn't terribly difficult, uh, just because of the fact that the story is so well crafted. Yoko Taro did such a good job crafting that narrative and, um, and, uh, eight, four, which was the company that did the, the, the English localization, um, that wrote the script in English or adapted the script into English did such a good job with the adaptation that, uh, I, I fully understood where 9S was coming from, what was happening. I, I it was it was really easy for me to to sink into his skin uh from an acting perspective. From a technical standpoint, there were a couple of moments that were uh that were vocally stressful. I I'll I'll say that. Yeah, because uh, 9S sometimes is yelling, sometimes he's talking like a rude guy and sometimes he's soft and calm. So that's it, what yet yeah, the yeah. uh the um there's there's a there's a couple big moments big outbursts from 9s that uh they're just there's so, there's so much emotion behind it that you can't i i i've studied all kinds of oh excuse me sorry yeah, i've studied all kinds of i've studied all kinds of acting technique and and so i i know how to project uh i know how to you know make my voice very loud without doing anything to damage my vocal cords yeah. uh, or lose my voice for a short period of time or anything like that. I know how to do those things on, on a technical level, but as soon as you layer in the amount of emotion that is going on behind what 9S is going through there, uh, there's, there's no way to fake that yeah. in, in a technical way. So, you just kind of have to go with it, and uh, so that that was definitely uh, vocally strenuous. <laughs> Do you have an example of uh, a scene or uh, a line that was difficult for you to interpret in Ninas? On the bridge yeah. in Route C, we did that that scene. 
With that the... scene, <laughs> yeah. and and um and there's a scene a little bit later on. Actually, we recorded both of them, I think, back to back. But I I recorded the big scream on the bridge, and then we went into another cinematic with uh, when Nine S fights, um, a whole bunch of. Uh, how do I say this without spoiling? I guess I can't. A whole bunch of two Bs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that and the and the that sequence I remember because of the fact that I had done the big shouty stuff that was very emotional. I had basically blown out my my vocal cords. Yeah. Um, and we only had a couple things left to do, but I know I know the the weeping that comes at the end of that sequence fighting the the two B clones. Um, we had to pick up again on my next session a few <laughs> days later because of the fact that my voice was just gone. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I think that the part in the bridge, uh, if I remember, is the, the one he says, Hey, two, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fantastic. I love your voice. Also, in the end, in the final battle, there were, there are lots of emotions in 9S in this final battle, and I love your interpretation, actually. Uh, it sounds, like you say, it sounds real. You know, like in anime, sometimes uh, the voice actor have to sound a little goofy, a little weird. But with your interpretation of, of Automata, it feels more real. It, do you uh, do you say that it's difficult, uh, it's different to interpret a character, a shonen character in anime, and a shonen character in a video game, or in that aspect? Um, I, I, you know, I get asked that question a lot, uh, and I feel like there, there's always going to be stylistic differences from one project to the next. I don't think that the medium really necessarily influences that too, too much. To a certain extent, video games tend to veer more towards the, the realistic and, and, uh, anime and even more so Western animation tend to to heighten things a little bit more get a little bit more um uh, surreal i i suppose for for lack of a better term yeah but, uh, but there's there's exceptions to that rule within within every medium and and i think it's just it just varies from one project to the next and and in terms of uh in terms of my interpretation of anything i i take the style of the project into account a little bit Uh, certainly when when choosing a character's voice um to to put that in in quotes because because uh, <laughs> you, you know sometimes you do kind of a wacky affectation or something um but uh but for the most part it's 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 all even when you are doing something ridiculous it's all about the acting so it's it's all about the storytelling and yeah i try to I try, I don't know if I always succeed, but I try to take that into account first and foremost and just just focus on telling the story and, and being true to the character, whatever truth that may be, depending on uh, how heightened the style is. All right, okay, cool. Well, we could say um, 9S is the character with the most presence in the game. So you knew exactly what was all the story of the game uh, before release. Um, I knew, I knew probably more than most people did. Uh, in at least on the in the in the in the cast, um, because generally speaking, we only get the information that's pertinent to our performance. And yeah, as as you said, 9S is the most prevalent start to finish. Yeah. Um, but there were still a few surprises. Uh, and the biggest one that I can think of in memory was is uh, finding um, the the crashed flight unit in oh. Route C. That uh, playing through the game when I found that that hit me hard because I had no idea that that moment was was in the game. Yeah. Uh, and it was pretty powerful. I was also surprised by by the Romeo and Juliet stuff, though, in the in the amusement park, which was hysterical. But I had no idea that that was in the game because 9S didn't say anything about it. Right, right. It, it doesn't have any lines there. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, yeah. And once you play the game, that you feel that uh, knowing all the stuff affected the overall experience in the history. Oh, I think it. I think it hit me more, <laughs> honestly, because I was so I was so very involved with the project, and it was, um, it was so meaningful to me during during recording. Yeah. Uh, then to be able to see it all come together in in a finished form just just made it mean that much more to me um on top of the fact that it was so impactful uh, as as a player also um all the stuff from ending e was unexpected for you i think or not uh yeah yeah that that whole i mean i think i'd read stuff about uh, about what happened during that that end sequence because i was i was reading so much so many news reports on like or, or or reviews and things about about the game but uh but uh in terms of the story element or like that that whole end monologue with the with the pods yeah that was on to me and uh, how do you feel it the first time you get that end uh i had tears in my eyes i i felt uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt I felt moved. I don't I don't know what emotion to a to assign to it, but I felt moved. Yeah, it was it was a positive emotion, whatever it was. Yeah, for me it feels fantastic because um, it's not usual that the game makes you tears and automata make it very easy uh, with that message. I don't know what is the exact the exact message that Joko Taro has in the game. But I think uh, the positive feelings of that ending makes everyone likes it and, and say that it's uh, uh, one of the most prominent games in the industry right now, you know? So for me, it's, uh, it was very special. I think for you, it's the same too. Yeah, it was, it was big. <laughs> it was a big moment in my career, for sure. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then just as, as a player, it was, it, was, it was a meaningful game. I, I know I know that I'm biased, but uh, I try to tell people, even though I am biased, I love that game, and and everybody should play it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great experience, actually, for a gamer or uh, people who does not like games. It's a great experience if you get there. Yeah. Yeah, get somebody who is a gamer to play it for you, and just sit there and watch. That's that's something that my wife and I do sometimes. I'll play through the game while she watches and coaches me. Okay. Well, about the overall story, did you expect it to be this uh, depressive love story plus philosophical existentialism in the middle in this game, or, or was totally unexpected once you it finished? I I don't know that I really expected anything because I I was not familiar with Yoko Taro or his work before going into work on Automata. Um, yeah. but uh. Yeah, there was definitely some stuff that that came out of left field for me throughout the recording process and throughout the gameplay. Even though um, John Ricciardi, who works for Eight Four Localization, he was he was the 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 client that was in the room during most of my session. Oh. He was very familiar because Eight Four also did the localization for for the original Near, oh. um, and possibly the Dragon Guard series as well. I'm not sure, but uh, he he told me, you know. That this, uh, he he told me a little bit about Yoko Taro and about uh, about the type of games that that he liked to make. Yeah. Um, I also like to 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 share that um, none of us involved. Like, John Ricciardi might have been the only person involved in the English uh, adaptation of the game who had any inkling of how big Near Automata was going to get in terms of popularity. Oh, so. Um, uh because everybody else was like I mean I've never heard of Nier, I've never heard of Drakengard or or Yoko Taro or and you know it's just another JRPG game like it's going to be cool oh. to to work on but no but nobody's really going to care or I mean there's it's going to be it's going to have a niche following or whatever yes. but he I remember him telling us that uh or telling me that 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 uh the the series has had a cult following that was really passionate about it and that for the first time in the in the franchise, they had a game developer attached in Platinum Games that was really really solid. Um, so 
he was expecting big things from Automata, but I don't think I don't think he was expecting them to be as big as they were. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, actually, Automata was, cool. was a big surprise. Even for Square Enix, I think it, it was a big surprise that Automata has so much uh, popularity. Because uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. The voice actors uh, in Automata and the first, uh, at the beginning, uh, all of you maybe think that it uh, was a very small project, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it didn't, yeah, it didn't strike me as as something that was going to blow up any bigger than anything else that I had worked on up to that point in my career. And <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> totally wrong, I had to, to say. <laughs> well, uh, your favorite uh, scene of the game, do you have one? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Um, I, I showcase... I showcase the scene at the very, very end, uh, just to show off my my acting chops <laughs> or whatever. The scene, uh, the 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 final fight between 9S and A2. Yeah. But I don't know if I'd say that that's my favorite scene in the game. Um, I have a whole lot of different favorite moments. <laughs> All right. And your opinions about the relationship of 2B and Linus? Are they lovers, friends, family? What do you think about it? Oh, that is not for me to say. I don't. I don't know. Well, um, yeah. I think I, it, it's personal opinion. It, as mm -hmm. just as a as a fan of the series. Yeah. I think. Um, I think. I don't know if androids are necessarily well. They are because the, because uh, operator six uh, zero has that whole that whole kind of love uh, unrequited love thing going yeah. on. But and, uh, and to what know has the, the family thing going on too. Right. Yeah. But but uh, but in terms of nine S and two B, I think. They definitely, I would say, love each other, but the word love can mean so many different things in English. Um, and I don't know if it's if it's romantic or if it's if it's uh, more like a, a sibling type of thing. It it's it feels very intimate, whatever it is. Um, and I'm inclined to think that if. Uh, if only one of them has feelings of 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 a romantic incl inclination, the nine S does. Yeah. But I don't I don't know if that's necessarily true. It's 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 really hard to say, uh, and I think that's very deliberate. Yeah, well, Joko Taro doesn't make it easy because he always answers with um, whatever you think is right. That is the answer. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's difficult to have a, a a right answer about these questions. Well, um, do you consider that Automata marks a uh, before and after in your career as a voice actor? I'm not sure if I fully understand the question, but I, uh, I'll give it a go. Um, I think uh, I think there's definitely so there are a couple moments in my career or a couple projects in my career that I kind of look at as as big um, mm -hmm. landmarks and and big big springboards to to what whatever came next. Yeah. Um and I would say that uh, that Automata was definitely one of those big springboards for me. Um that that led that led to bigger and better things um in in my career. Yeah, that's exactly the answer I was expecting. Yeah, like uh that it uh, makes you level up in, in to say something right yeah. in your career. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for for yeah, for lack of a better uh better way of describing it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it felt like it, it it opened a lot of doors for me, yeah. Yeah, and um, all that fame that comes with 9S has affected you in, in some way in your personal life? Oh, gosh, I, I, it's hard for me to, to, to think of myself as any, any real degree of famous. Um, as, a, as a voice actor, nobody recognizes your face when you're walking about in the streets of, of Los Angeles or whatever. Um, and, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, I, even on a microcosm, I'm, I'm not, 
not that not that many people are familiar with who I am and what I do, even even with millions of people having played Automata or or watched uh, a, a show that my voice is in. Yeah. Very a very small percentage pay any attention to the the name behind the performance in in voiceover. So it's it's a very different uh, very different. I, I don't know. It's I, I do experience some small semblance of of celebrity, but it's it's a very minute version of it. Uh going to going to conventions uh, occasionally I'll get a glance or a comment from somebody that who recognizes me because because my picture's in the program or something. Um <laughs> Yeah. And uh and and, and you know, I, d on doing my, my Twitch streams I get I get a I get a few more viewers than than I would if if I wasn't uh, the voice of a beloved character, but uh, but that's about <laughs> that's that's about the extent of it. Wow. Otherwise, my life has not really changed in any in any measurable sense. Well, I have to admit, uh, in some comments of my subs when I announced the the this part, uh, this interview, uh, there were some girls that say, "Hey, he's handsome. He he looks like nine ass with the picture." <laughs> So I think your lady killer skills have been upgraded by a lot after all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but that... I don't know. I, I I don't know if I I don't know if I saw the picture that you used or not. It might have been one of those headshots that's older than my career is. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But that that's a comment I have from the girls in, uh, in from my subs. So I think uh, well. He uh, <laughs> have a, a very big, very big chance to have a, a good uh, lady out there to recognize it or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, are you aware of the new near replicant version one point two? I don't know what number else. Um... Yeah, yeah. I'm ex I'm super excited, and I am totally gonna play that because I loved playing through the original near. Yeah. And I can't wait to play through the new one. Well, I heard news about Hanae Natsuki doing a cameo appearance, just voice, in the game. Maybe you know something about the localization of that cameo? I, even if I did, I wouldn't be able to say. It, it would be <laughs> under very strict non-disclosure agreement. I don't. I don't know anything. Oh. Um, in fact, there was, there was a stream on, on Twitch uh, when I was playing through the original Nier. I remember musing yeah. about... Uh, uh, man, it'd be so cool if they did a, if they did a remake or a remaster of this, and if I got to be some small part in it. Yeah. And that was before any news had even dropped about, about the fact that the game was getting a remake. Um, and I, I, uh, I remember when I, when I did hear the news that the game was getting remade, I was like, wow, I'm glad nobody actually told me because of the fact that I went and said that in a public sense yeah. <laughs> because if i had been told i would have been in so much trouble oh. <laughs> yeah. I see that. well and um, would you try to apply for voices in the game maybe for the voice of young near because um i think the papa near is not gonna be in the game so i yeah i think they're doing they're doing the brother near version yeah i think i'm, I'm not positive though um i uh I it's yet I'm I'm always open to more work and I'm especially open to to working on on a on a Yokotaro project and especially that one. Um but uh I would be utterly shocked if I were even in the consideration for for that particular role. I I think it's going to go to somebody who hasn't uh who hasn't at least hasn't had nearly as prevalent of a in other presence in other games so in the from, series from the series right? Yeah yeah yeah. 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 Well, well, luck, anyways. Um, you have met Yoko Taro personally, personally in the LA concert, right? Uh, what's your opinion about? Yeah, him? very, very briefly. I I met him uh, at after the near orchestra concert that that happened here in Los Angeles. Uh, not all that long ago, actually. I think it was what in is, uh, this year, January. Right? Yeah, January or February. Yeah. Um, I I met him very briefly. He does not speak very much english at all so it's not like we had a a big conversation or anything oh sure. um but uh he he actually he strikes me as a very um quiet and reserved 
guy. Uh, yeah. I think that's the reason that he wears that ridiculous Emil mask uh, <laughs> yeah. whenever he makes a public appearance is because he doesn't want to to do a public appearance where people actually see his face. Yeah. Um, although he's not really shy about doing that behind closed doors, uh, just because I think that mask is very uncomfortable. But he doesn't he doesn't want uh, the public at large to he doesn't want any sense of of celebrity in his in his day to day life and uh, yeah and and when he was not you know on so to speak um not not being asked to to do any sort of presentation or per, or performance aspect he was he was pretty quiet and part of that could be the, the fact that he doesn't speak english i don't know but uh he's he seems like a a very reserved guy yeah um, but he's but he's a genius yeah that's that's no question of course he's a genius <laughs> well i i read uh, somewhere in interviews from him that he says that he wears the mask because he's very boring and, and when he doesn't have it so <laughs> yeah maybe yeah, he's he's always he's always ready with some quip <laughs> Yeah. No matter what the question is. Yeah. So uh, I think it's cool that he changed personality when he has the mask, and when he doesn't have it, well, he's a little different. He's more, he's more reserved, like, like you say. Yeah, I think it gives him a little bit of confidence when he's when he's in front of a crowd. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool from him. Well, now talking in general, not only Automata. Which are your favorite characters that you have interpreted so far? I. <sighs> People like to ask the question, "What's your favorite character?" And there's there's no way to answer that succinctly because I I love the vast majority of them. <laughs> um, I I can I can point to Mikazuki August in Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. Uh, I can point to Mob in Mob Psycho 100. Uh, uh, I had a I I had a role on a Cartoon Network show that uh, I'm not sure if it's made it to Latin America yet or not, but uh, I played a character named Simon in Infinity Train that was oh. really, really cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Alm in, in Fire Emblem, Soren also in Fire yes. Emblem. Um, uh, uh, Hyde in Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, Gran in Grand Blue Fantasy, uh, Watri in Your Lie in April. What, you have Shinji that? in Fate Stay Night. Uh, yeah, oh. the list goes on and on and on. Yeah, like more like a uh, hundred characters, maybe more like two hundred. How many <laughs> do you think you have? I, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I I, I don't count. But uh, <laughs> it's it's. I've I've been I've been very lucky to have the have the career that I have. Yeah, and do you have like a dream character that you always wanted to have the chance to interpret? I don't want to take anybody's job away from them. I don't. I don't want to play any 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 role that that somebody else is already doing very very well. Um, there are character types that I that I love to to play, and I've I've always I, I like to say that I would like to be the next Nathan Drake, whatever that is, the the lead character from from the Uncharted series. Yeah. Uh, but I get. I mean that that archetype is is comes from Han Solo or Indiana Jones or or Malcolm Reynolds, or um, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of characters that that kind of fit that same mold, um, yeah. and I would I would I I love getting to play characters like that because they're they're fun, they're funny, they're witty, um, and I I feel like I've had I've 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 been able to dip my toes in those waters a little bit, but I've I've never really gotten to sink my teeth into that kind of role, and it would be a lot of fun to to do that. Right, that would be cool. Well, now I make a proposal to my subs. They will make questions that was to be answered uh, answered by you. More or less, there are more than a hundred questions between all my social networks. So I selected a few ones, and I would okay, appreciate. Okay, good. <laughs> I, you had me scared for a second. I was like, we're not going to sit here for a hundred more questions, are we? <laughs> no, no, the no. answers are going to get a lot shorter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. I selected a few ones, like six, uh, yeah, six, seven Great. questions. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, <laughs> help me a little with this. So, um, Federico Aguaisol asked, did you have a character that you wanted to get the role but couldn't get it? More or less the same question oh. as before. Well, yeah. I mean, well, no, that's that's a little different. That's, that's uh, auditions that I 
that I didn't book. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, I, it's, I mean, there have been, there have been a few, um, I kind of, I try to, the, the, because as an actor, you get a whole lot more no's than you get yeses. Um, and typically the, the no answer is, 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 is no answer at all. You just don't hear, uh, okay. anything. Yeah. Because it would take way too long for the casting director to reach out to a thousand people who auditioned for a part and didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, but uh, I I can think of one specific story because so I try because of the fact that you get so many of those mm. those no's or there you you book a lot less of the jobs than the ones that you don't. Yeah. So you kind of have to keep a mentality of, well, it'd be cool to get this, but uh, I'm not gonna you know hold my breath for it or anything like that because most of the time you won't <laughs> yeah. um right. but uh but i can think of i can think of one specific instance and this is gonna possibly answer another question i don't know if th it's a question that comes up a lot i don't know if it's gonna come up uh today yeah. but uh people like to ask if i if i familiarize myself with um at least with anime if i familiar my f familiarize myself with the show the manga, whatever, before, um, before auditioning for, for a role. And yeah. the answer to that question is no. And this story is why, uh, when I auditioned for the role of mob in mob psycho 100, yeah. I decided to try, um, I decided to try watching the first episode before, before I recorded my audition. Uh, cause I was trying to research the, the, the character. Um, and I, and I did, and I, I researched, I mean, I watched that first episode and I auditioned, I actually auditioned for four different characters on that show. Um, but, uh, it worked out for me and I booked mob and I was really excited. Uh, cause I remember watching that first episode and going, Ooh, this show looks really cool. It would be super awesome to be able to be a part of this. It looks like the next one punch man. That would be great. Um, and, uh, and so it's, and I, I lucked out and, and the approach worked. And then, um, not that long after that, I had, I had the opportunity to audition for another anime called Anohana, um, which, uh, had a very similar feel to another anime that I was a part of called Your Lie in April. Um, and it was directed by the same, uh, or the, the, the English adaptation was directed by the same, the same director uh patrick seitz who i really really love uh i love being able to work with him and i really wanted to work with him again so when the auditions came around for anohana i did the same thing and i went and watched the first episode of the show yeah. and i got really excited and i really wanted to be a part of it and i auditioned for two characters and i had in-person callbacks for both of those characters and i did not book either one Whoa. and then I had, you know, just a little bit of an emotional gut punch where typically when you get the, the answer no or you don't get the answer at all, you just kind of go on with your life. To typically the approach is you do the audition and then you forget about it. Yeah. Uh, but but on a role like that, I, I got excited and I wanted it. And and then when I didn't get it, it kind of hurt my feelings. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so that, so that taught me a lesson. <laughs> Teaches you the lesson. Person, You'd never... Right? Yeah, yeah. So it, t it it taught me a lesson that you don't ever want to get too attached to a role that you haven't booked yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, harsh lesson learned. Well, um, Vicente Spinola asks, after finishing some of other Joko Taro's games, would you say that you see Automata in a different light from your first experience playing it? I would have to go back and play it again um, to, to really be able to answer that question. I have played a, a little bit since finishing the original Nier. Yeah. Uh, and I know there are a few Easter egg moments that I didn't full, I obviously didn't understand playing through the game without having done the original Nier or gone through the original Nier, but uh, it didn't, most of those I had already experienced by the time I went back to, 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 to play to finish up my my 100% or my version of 100% completion. Right. Um 
So, uh, so I'd have to play through it again to, to really be able to answer that question. I, I'm sure that there would be a few things that would make me go, oh, but that's, that's a reference to this, and that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I think Yoko Taro has done a really good job of, while he does leave a lot of those little, those little tidbits that, that point to or reference the other games in the series, yeah. he also makes every, each one stand on its own. So yeah. you don't need to be familiar with what came before in order to appreciate uh, the game that you're playing now. Yeah, that's a great thing about Yoko Taro's game. You can enjoy it without knowing without knowing anything else from the older games. But they yeah, yeah, connected. exactly. Obviously, you're gonna obviously you're gonna get a more uh, a fuller appreciation of the game if you're familiar with everything that came before it. But you don't need it to 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 understand it. Yeah. Well, Luiso asks, do you agree with Nina's decisions and the personality changes after 2B's death? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, that's, that's kind of the tragic downfall for, for 9S is that, you know, as the player, you see yeah. A2's side of the story, so you, you know why she does the things that she does. And then you see 9S reacting to it because he's only seeing what happened, not the why. Yeah. So he, 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 he goes off the rails, off the deep end um, because of the fact that he doesn't, he doesn't understand why this is happening. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think that's what makes him such a, such a sympathetic character because you, also because of the fact that you get to know him so well yeah. through two endings of the game before we get to that point and uh, uh so you 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 can sympathize with him because of the fact that you see why he's making the mistakes that he's making but you also it's, it's also pretty easy to recognize that they are big mistakes yeah all right well, now, Alex Teno says, if you implant the memories of Kyle McCarley to a Jorha unit, what will he do in the Automata universe? <laughs> um, in the Automata universe, what would he do? Yeah. I imagine he would probably be a, he would probably be a scanner unit. <laughs> he would, he would, he would probably be, you know, 277s or something <laughs> <laughs> all right well israel asks, do you have a character you didn't like to interpret in your career and why was that oh can i answer that question diplomatically <laughs> um <laughs> the answer is yes uh, and I cannot give any specific examples because I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Of course. <laughs> but I can say, um, that, uh, there, there have been a couple times, it's, it's usually when, when the script is not very good that um, I do not enjoy working on a, on a particular project. Yeah. Um, there has, there hasn't been, I don't think I've had any. Uh, I, I think I've been uh, pretty lucky in that I've I've been able to, I've I've gotten along quite well with with all the directors that I've had the opportunity to work with. Um, so I don't think it's it's ever been like a a clash a butting of heads in that regard or anything like that. But if if the script is not well written um, and it feels like we're we're pulling teeth to get something passable on every line. Yeah. Uh, that gets extremely frustrating and uh, and not a very enjoyable experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, also he says that Israel said that he loves your interpretation as Alm from Fire Emblem. So. Well, thank you very much. I I I'm a big fan of that uh, of that now as well. Okay. <laughs> I knew nothing about Fire Emblem before working on that that uh, oh. that game, but uh, but I I I love Alm's story. All right. I love the Alm and Celica relationship. Yeah, we have a lot of fans from Fire Emblem, but I can't talk a lot because I I never played the Fire Emblem actually. It's, so. <laughs> I, I will I will freely admit that it's not my style of game to play as a yeah. player. It's 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 a lot and it's it's long and it's it's a, it feels slow to me compared to the kind of games that I like to play typically. But uh, but I I do like the story. 
Yeah. Which, well, as an actor, that's that's what matters to me. Of course. <laughs> well, Inurali in says, uh, what will be your next step in your career? Would you like to have your own studio for voice actor or direct the project? Um, I... I already have done a little bit of directing. Uh, I I oh. directed the 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 dub for the last uh, twelve episodes of Carol and Tuesday, which is on Netflix. I don't yeah. know if I don't know if it's available in Latin America yeah, or not. Yes, yes, it's available. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the the English dub of of that I I directed the last twelve episodes. Um, I have uh, also directed a little bit of uh, downloadable content for a game that the game's already out, but the DLC isn't. Um, <laughs> so I, I've, I've directed for that as well. I've done a lot of script adaptation um, for anime, not not for video games, but for anime. Uh, and um, oh, I occasionally I'll daydream about the idea of opening up a, a recording studio that that's. A recording studio for hire but i i have a home studio that i'm now working out of quite regularly in, the, in this new world um and uh i think i'm i'm i mean what really excites me most of all is getting the chance to perform and and getting the chance to to be an actor i do enjoy the directing work uh which is something that i didn't really i kind of fell into i was not expecting to to do that or to enjoy doing it but i I, I have so far really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, but what really excites me most of all is getting the chance to, to get get in front of the microphone myself and and keep keep performing. Um, and uh, d generally speaking, in whatever capacity that that may be, um, in terms of the, the, the big aspirations, the hopes and the dreams, I, 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 I feel like I'm I'm kind of living it. I I I want to I want to keep keep doing that. Keep doing more of of the big stuff that I've been booking. I want I want more of uh those those cartoon network shows and those those AAA video games and that kind of stuff. But yeah. uh but I'm I'm quite happy doing doing what I'm doing. All right. Well, Lumina again with this question from Lumina. Uh, could you say something with the voice of Ninas but in Spanish? In Spanish. Yeah, mm. <laughs> you mm. know some words mm. in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, I took I took Spanish in high school, and <laughs> okay. uh, and a and a little bit in college, but <laughs> uh, yeah. my my Spanish is <laughs> muy muy mal. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, let me think. I gotta think of a nine S line and how I can. Yeah. Or oh, I gotta. To I gotta. Say. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go to Google Translate for this because I just don't. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. We will glory wait. to mankind in Spanish. Uh, bueno, sería como, but it will be sorry. <laughs> it will be like <laughs> Gloria a la humanidad. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gloria a la humanidad. <laughs> Something well, like that. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. I think you pass. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, next question. Uh, the last one. Uh, Fel Crusher asks, what kind of music do you like? Do you have a recommendation of artists or songs? <laughs> My uh my favorite um my favorite band of all time is uh, a band called Bare Naked Ladies. They were yeah. very popular in in Canada and uh and in the United States in the 90s. Um their big hit was a song called One Week. Uh it's been one week since you looked at me, got your head to the side, said I'm angry, blah 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 blah. Um but uh I don't know if that ever made it down into Latin America. Um uh, I'm also a big fan of Weird Al Yankovic, and um, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 an eclectic mix. Uh, <laughs> typically, typically our our Pandora is playing uh, '90s alternative in my house, just because we like to reminisce. All right. <laughs> okay. 
Well, Kyle, um, it has been a great experience. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, maybe you could uh, send me your social links. Uh, wait, this is not Persona 4. Uh, your social media links, I think it is the word. Sure. Uh, so I can share it in this video and the people can know more about your work and the future projects. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the, the important ones are Twitter and Twitch. All and right. It's just it's just my name, but I'll yeah I'm I'm sending them in the chat right now. Okay. Um, do you have any last words for the audience that you would like uh, to share? I'll I'll just say thank you guys so much for the support, and um I I, I really appreciate the fact that uh, that you guys that you guys are so appreciative of of the 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 the, the stuff that I have had a small part in in creating. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kyle, again, for giving us a little piece of your time. I know you are a busy man. So, um, hope to see you again soon. Uh, maybe another chance. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, bueno, chicos, este ha sido Kyle McCarty. Por favor, síganlo en sus redes sociales y no olviden darle like y compartir a este video. Así me será posible que el canal pueda atraer a más personalidades del calibre de Kyle en un futuro. Nos vemos en otra.